it's time now to uh, do a bit of tuning on the uh, T2LT coax antenna, coax dipole, and uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on then. Uh, location is uh, a coastal location, so uh, rather nice uh, place to be doing this uh, wee job. I'll just have a pan round and show you the location. Very nice spring day it is too. So without further ado, let's get into the uh, construction because that's what we're here for. And I've got the antenna, the very one that I built today on a six meter five glass flag pole stroke uh, roach pole stroke fishing pole. Um, I'll just zoom in a little bit so hopefully you can make out where the um, outer jacket turns into the inner dielectric. I'll just zoom in a little bit then go up the antenna. It's very sunny so I've got actually a job to see. Hopefully you'll spot it on the way up. All the way up to the top and I've actually got the um, top part went over at 102 inches so that should be there or thereabouts. On longer poles I found that's pretty much it but on the shorter ones as you can see it's all a bit close to the ground, so that might throw it out a little bit. Uh, for purists, somebody who really wants to um, peak and tune this uh, antenna to perfection, because it's a balanced antenna, like a dipole, really you should be adjusting the length of the bottom half and the top half equally. But um, it's supposed to be a quick and easy thing to um, construct and install. And once you start getting to that sort of level of um, accuracy, it can uh, sort of um, detract from that sort of uh, ease of build that is its main quality. Um, not really noticed any uh, poor performance by um, just rolling the top only over. So um, that's what I will be going for today. Um, as you can see on the bottom side of the choke, I have clipped on my ferrite. There was an argument whether it be better on the top or the bottom, and the bottom or one out, I should say. And then we got the PL259 to which I should attach my chosen feeder of the day. So, uh, yeah, without like further ado, I'm going to crack open the uh, radio kit and see what we can do with the old uh, SWR. Right, time for uh, tuning. Um, so, yeah, I've used basically four. I call them set points, checkpoints. Uh, I want this antenna to cover the whole of the um, legal CB channels in the UK. So that means the lowest frequency of interest, channel 1 mid block, 26.965 MHz. So I should check it there. I should also check it on channel 40 on the mid block, which is 27.405 MHz. Then the next higher frequency is channel 1 on the UK 40, 27.60125 MHz, I think it is, top of my head. And channel 40 on the UK 40 is the highest frequency of interest, 27.99125 MHz. So, yeah, without further ado, let's go to mid block channel 1, so that's 27965, uh, I should say. Over to the SWR meter. Swing the needle over to the calibration mark. Over we go. 1.5. So right that down. Next set point is channel 40 on the mid block. Just check that needle sat in the right place. Oh, 1.2. Write that down. Next up, change bands. UK. Whoops. One. Again. Check that's on the mark, okay? It is. About 1.2 and a half, 1.3 maybe. Slightly difficult to see in the sunlight. Write that down. 1.3 say and then up to channel 40 
on the UK, which is 279925, almost 28 megs. Again, just check that it's on that calibration mark. Uh, just a touch over 1.6, shove 1.6 down on the on the list. So yeah, no adjustment necessary. That's uh, very good indeed. For an antenna that um, apparently has got a characteristic impedance of about 70 odd ohms, those are the sort of figures that you would expect anyway. So that is great. I've not had to do anything to it. It's still folded over at 102 inches. Um, obviously, you would make it longer and shorter to make your SWR as it should be. Um, I've not had to do anything, so it shows it's nicely balanced, the top half. The exposed dielectric is the same as the uh, bottom half down to the choke, which is great. Uh, if you find that you're folding over a lot of cable and the, the top half is nothing like 102 inches, because I've seen some people folding over a couple of feet to get the SWR down, revisit your choke or, or revisit your construction because there's a good chance you're going to tune it at resonance and um, that will affect the performance. It's supposed to be a balanced antenna, so really the top half and the bottom half should be... Uh, the same length but um, it's a little bit different so be it but if it's way off then uh, there's a good chance you've uh, tuned your antenna out of uh, resonance just to get a good SWR so if it's if it's nothing like it revisit uh, okay apart from that what is uh, to report it's um, been an easy construction really you've seen it from start to finish there it is looking lovely against the blue sky as I say, a really easy antenna to construct. I'll drop it down in a minute and just show you the uh, the fold over at the top, but um, pretty much there's nothing else to say, apart from what I'll do next. Um, I'll try it on the air, and we'll try and get some uh, contacts with it. Unfortunately, I'm not staying out. It's a Wednesday, but I'm not staying out for the, um, the net this evening. I've got to get back, and I've missed the afternoon net, so uh, unlikely to be anyone on that I can work a bit of distance with. So uh, probably have to wait till uh, either the weekend or next Wednesday to try this one out. But uh, certainly uh, from a construction point of view, it's been uh, it's been nice and easy. And uh, the tuning side of it, absolutely easy. And not even had to um, drop it down once to, uh, to adjust the thing. So brilliant. Okay, um, if there's anything else I think of, I'll add it into this video. If not, uh, probably the on-air testing will be the next uh, part of it. Right, it's an extra test. I'm actually going to test the SWR at the very um, base of the antenna, just beneath the uh, the coil at the PL259. So instead of the cup into the feeder there, I've introduced the SWR meter. So without further ado, we shall see what it is on uh, mid block channel 1. Go ahead. Just on the set mark. And it's 6 pretty close to what it was at the end of the uh, feeder. Go up to channel 40 on the mids. Go ahead. Set point. Uh, 1.3. So um, not a lot in it at all really, so it uh, shows us how big and um, certainly uh, a pretty good one at the radio as well. So um, yeah, to me that's, uh, that's a winner. So there we are, we're tuned up and ready to go. I've actually tuned up on the 6 metre pole, which is the length of the pole that I intend to use it with. And uh, next stop, if I don't get a QSO today, I'll be out on the hills giving it a go on a net so we can work a bit of distance on the antenna that I've constructed in uh, part one and part two of this uh, video. So uh, yeah, happy home brewing, good luck with it. Hopefully it's been uh, of some use to you all and um, yeah, we'll catch you on the on-air testing. Freelander, I've got a lot of coal getting rigged, so um, stick it in the middle, it's uh, 
Yeah, Roger, Roger. Yeah, it's uh, another one of those homebrew um, T2LT um, aerials that I've made before. But I thought I'd redo the video with a bit more detail and um, try and make one that's a bit less shaky than the last one. So uh, just a remake, and I've constructed this one from scratch. Hopefully the video comes out. And uh, finished it off with a decent Q so at the end there, Ryan. So uh, nice one, matey. Um, yeah, you're... Um, I well, I'll have a look at the meter next time. I dare say you're up on about S7, S8 into me. I'm literally right on the coast, so it's only uh, probably about 100 feet ASL, mate. But um, I've probably got a pretty good um, line of sight up through the Bristol Channel to yourself there, uh, Ryan. Back to you. Okay, uh, certainly didn't have to wait long for um, a decent contact on this antenna. I've just landed a QSO with uh, Ryan, uh, another member of the same uh, Charlie Tango group as myself. I think it's unit number 1824, so um, nice one, Ryan. Um, he was running from um, a location near the Clee Hills. I think it's uh, the village uh, a little bit further down from the top. So uh, not even on the top of Clee Hills. Um, that is in uh, near Ludlow in Shropshire. So we're talking 60, 70 miles away. Okay, I got a pretty decent signal launch up Bristol Channel, but 60, 70 miles is 60, 70 miles. So uh, it does go to show that this antenna is pretty effective. So uh, yeah, I didn't even have to wait to uh, get up on high ground or uh, join in one of the DX nets to uh, make a decent uh, contact with this uh, antenna that you've seen uh, constructed from start to finish. So uh, happy days. Um, say it could get you out of trouble if you busted your main antenna could um, get you on the air in a shtf situation um who knows um a lot of people just use it as their main antenna anyway that being uh, something you constructed yourself if you do get any contacts with it they're that much sweeter so uh, yeah hopefully uh part one and part two of this uh, little construction sort of uh, session might be of use to one or two of you and um good luck with the uh, home brewing of your uh, T2LT stroke coax dipole. Okay, we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers and beers all. Right, brew has been substituted for a beer. We're now into the evening. It's been a long week. Ah, that's better. Right, just a quick uh, snippet of video. Just uh, to uh, reiterate a couple of points that um, I didn't uh, probably cover in the uh, tuning video. Um, one thing I didn't do, I didn't show it packed down. That's it. That's how much I had to bend over from the 106 inches. So that's about 102 inches uh, all told. So that um, was an extremely easy bit of tuning. Not everyone's going to find that um, is going to be the case. Because obviously variation in surroundings or coax quality or whatever, whatever. But that's what I did. 102 inches and it, uh, it needed no further adjustment really. Um, on my particular one, because I said I, I made the PL259 off only about a, a foot from the choke, SO239 coupler, and that gave me the option to use that feeder on the day, but I could have used um, any feeder I wanted, longer, shorter. I could have gone over to RG213 for a long run, or RG8 Mini maybe for... Uh, a sort of medium stroke long run so uh, choice is yours choice is yours also whether you just want to leave that long enough to go straight to your radio and uh, eliminate that extra potential point of failure just something you can uh, go with the flow and go what uh, with what you want really so there we are all done this one will be uh, coming out and being used on the hilltops probably as part of my uh, more portable pack of kit that I, uh, I use for the CTX uh, walkabout type stuff so uh, you should see it uh, used quite a few times in the coming videos so um, by all means have a go and uh, it just goes to prove if nothing else you can work with something that's uh, cheap and very easy to make and uh, get some decent results okay catch you on the next one cheers all